everybody? Any of you are glad to be in here where it's nice and cool this morning? I don't know what to say about the weather this last week other than unless you were a lizard, it was miserable. <laughs> That's all I know to say. What a fat boy, it was miserable. <laughs> but into July and August, I guess that's what we're supposed to expect around here in these parts. So, praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. How many of you feel that way? Good to see your smiling faces. We're going to actually be back on today's lesson. We're, we were one behind all the way through, and I told Brother Robert the one for last week was enough like the week before I felt like the Lord would have us go in this direction. How many of you are thankful for life and you're thankful for hope? And that's what we're going to talk about just for a little bit this morning. And we may venture in a little different direction, Brother Robert, for a few moments, but we'll try to wrap back up here just shortly. I'll get out of the way of the pastor here in plenty of time. So let's jump right into our lesson text. We'll begin reading at Joel book of Joel, the second chapter, beginning at verse 23, and we'll read through verse 32, and then we'll ask Brother Robert to read our focus verses. <coughs> the Bible says, Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, and the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty, and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dwelt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, that I am the Lord your God, and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit, and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord Shall call. Brother Robert, would you read our focus verses, Joel 2, 28 and 29, please? Can we go to the Lord and ask him to help us here today? Jesus, we love you. We appreciate you, Lord. We realize our need for you. We realize, Lord, that you have the answers. Lord, we don't have them, but you have the answers to life. You hold hope in your hand for us. And we ask you, Jesus, to just be with us today. Speak to our hearts, Lord. Provide comfort in our hearts and our lives in this day and hour that we live in. Give us direction. Keep us safe. We'll give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you. You may be seated. <clears throat> We're all definitely very thankful for life. Aren't you thankful that the Lord woke us up this morning? Yes. We lay down at night and Brother Rich, fear doesn't grip our heart. <clears throat> The Lord's always woke us up, and until such a time as he calls us home, he will. He gives us life, and with that life, he gives us hope. These blessings come 
from above. These blessings come from the Lord. He gives us life and he gives us hope. Without him, I think it's safe to say we have neither one. In our lesson today, trouble was on the way. And we're going to touch on that here in just a moment. To set the stage a little bit better for that, let me, let me read from the book of Joel, the first chapter. And this is the New Living Translation version. I'm going to read a few verses here to kind of set the stage for where we're going. This is Joel 1 and 1. The Lord gave this message to Joel, son of Bethuel. Hear this, you leaders of the people. Listen, all who live in the land. In all your history has anything like this happened to before. Tell your children about it in the years to come and let your children tell their children. Pass the story down from generation to generation. After the cutting locusts finished eating the crops, the swarming locusts took what was left. After them came the hopping locusts and then the stripping locusts too. Wake up, you drunkards, and weep. Wail, all you wine drinkers. All the grapes are ruined and all your sweet wine is gone. A vast army of locusts has invaded my land, a terrible army too numerous to count. Its teeth are like lion's teeth, its fangs like those of a lioness. It has destroyed my grapevines and ruined my fig trees, stripping their bark and destroying it, leaving the branches white and bare. Weep like a bride dressed in black, mourning the death of her husband. For there is no grain or wine to offer at the temple of the Lord, so the priests are in mourning. The ministers of the Lord are weeping. The fields are ruined. The land is stripped bare. The grain is destroyed. The grapes have shriveled, and the olive oil is gone. Despair, all you farmers. Wail, all you vine growers. Weep because the, barley, the wheat and barley, all the crops of the field are ruined. The grape vines have dried up, and the fig trees have withered. The pomegranate trees, palm trees, and apple trees all the fruit trees have dried up, and the people's joy has dried up with them. Anytime we think, Brother Rich, that we're doing it on our own, we've got another, another thought coming. When God pulls his blessings away from us or away from a nation, we're in trouble. We're in deep trouble, and such was the case here. But there was hope, and we're gonna we're gonna talk about that just a, here in just a few moments. <clears throat> so let me ask you a question: Is God a God of punishment? Is He a God of judgment? No, that's not His nature, Sandy. By nature, God is a God of mercy. He is a God of love. But there comes a day of reckoning. And Sister Rich, these people had reached that day of reckoning. The book of Joel follows Hosea in, in the Bible. And a close reading of Hosea and Joel provides a clue about the reason for this judgment of God. In Hosea, the rebellious people did not realize that it was the Lord who provided their corn, their wine, and their oil, as well as multiplying their silver and gold. They had reached a point where they just took it for granted. These people were rebels. Brother Robert, Hosea 2 and 8 tells us that they offered these things, this corn and wine and oil, they offered it to the idol Baal. God gave them the increase. God provided this for them. But instead of offering it back as a sacrifice to him, they offered it to a dumb idol that had not done anything for them. How do you think that made God feel? And this is not in my notes, but God never changes. The Bible said he is the same yesterday, he is the same today, and he will be the same forever. So, if he was upset with them at that time, for 
Brother Rich, he's going to be upset with us today, and he's going to be upset with our ancestors in the future, our children, or whoever. If we forget God and we forget about what he's done for us, we're walking on thin ice. In Joel, we discover that the judgment of the Lord involves the same agricultural products. Now, being in that business, Brother Robert, you, you get a little concerned and worried because if God pulls his blessings away from a nation, what's the first thing that's going to be affected? Food production. You can have all these problems following, and that's our livelihood. However, let me say, I believe the Lord will take care of his people. Even in the event that he provides massive destruction upon things, I believe God will take care of his people, his chosen generation and his, his people. Joel 1 and 10 says, The field is wasted, the land mourneth, for the corn is wasted, the new wine's dried up, and the oil languisheth. So their food production, all of their necessities was affected. The Lord knows how to get our attention. How many of you believe that? He, he can get our attention in absolutely the blink of an eye. Without his blessings, everything we try to do will just fall apart in our lap. I don't want to try to accomplish anything. I can't accomplish anything without God's blessings. Absolutely nothing. We must have the Lord. God is a God of mercy, but when humanity, which is his creation, decides we're going to do it our way, we're going to do what we want to do, we don't need God. That's a very dangerous situation to be placed in. Looks like to me, and I'm certainly not a negative individual, but we have to be realistic sometimes. It, does it look like to you guys that's about the situation that we find ourselves in as a country and as a world today? We don't even want to think about it. Those of us that believe in God, those of us that worship and magnify his name, we don't want to think about the direction that our country has. And it's not everyone. I mean, you listen to the news media, they'd make you think it was everyone. Mr. Carolyn, it's about a small percentage. And the vast majority of people still love the Lord, still have a respect for God. But you don't hear about the good deeds that's done. All you hear about is bad and it's going to be worse tomorrow. Can you imagine, I don't want to be left behind. I don't want to be here when God's people's taken away. That's the only thing I believe holding back the floodgates of hell right now, Sister Rich, is God's people. When God's people leaves, my prayer is, Lord, help me to be one of them. Help me to be one of them. <clears throat> Many people don't give a thought about the Lord. Some of them don't even believe in God. Is it any wonder that we live in a world that's in constant disarray? COVID pandemic, drought, wildfires, floods, storms, loss of life. I'm going to read a direct quote from a very highly regarded agronomist. And he is technical product manager for one of the largest seed companies in the world. Super guy, super individual. He's my age. We're within a few months of one another. And Brother Sandy, this was his comments just a few days ago on Facebook. He said, I've been working in row crop ag for nearly 40 years, and I have never seen the level nor the widespread distribution of crop damaging levels of insects. So much, and he's referring to last winter, for a huge snowstorm and extremely low temperatures to curtail insect populations. It didn't work. And then he had a picture on there of, of an 80-acre soybean field. And Brother Robert, it was as bare as the top of this pulpit. There was nothing left. Army worms had slicked it completely to the ground. It was bare dirt. It looked like a piece of fallow ground. And they had left nothing. 
You say, well, you have things to fight them with this day and time, and you do. But it's, you feel like you fight one thing and you knock the fire down over here and there's something else flares up. It's just without God's blessings, we're, not, we're in trouble, to put it very plain and simple. We're talking about life and we're talking about hope. And you say, well, it doesn't sound like to me we have a lot of hope. We're outside of the Lord, Brother Rich, we don't. But this, and I'm closing, this is where our hope comes in. Our hope is right here. Our hope is in the Word of God. He cannot lie. If he said it's going to happen, it's going to happen. And he said, I'm going to come back after a people that are called by my name, that have made themselves ready, and I'm going to take them out of here. And if he said it, you can, you can go to the bank on it because that's the way it's going to happen. His word is true. We have life and we have hope. Jesus Christ is our hope. And there's been a lot said about this verse of scripture here in the last six months or a year. We may ask, what do we need to do? In 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, and then you know where I'm going, says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their lands. Is it a hopeless situation? Absolutely not. Without God it is, but the hope that we have is not in this world, it's not in the government, it's not in politicians. Our hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if we keep our hand in his hand, even though at times things may look dark, things may look gloomy, Sister Rich, they're not. We have life and we have a hope. Lord bless you.